Coming up on LACC TV, French officials say they are seeking a second fugitive directly involved in the Paris attacks. Plus, one day before the terrorist attack on Paris, there was an attack on Beirut, Lebanon. All this and more coming up next on Los Angeles Community Connection. Welcome to Los Angeles Community Connection from the HFPA Center for Cinema and Television at Los Angeles City College. I'm Darcel Hoover. And I'm Jeremy Jesse. And now for our top story. French officials say they are seeking a third fugitive directly involved in the Paris attacks. On November 13th, it was indicated that one person involved was, was unaccounted for. Several police sources told the French newspaper Le Monde they believed the car used in the attacks was night spots on carrying three people. Two of those attackers have already been identified as Brahim and Salem Abdesalam, leaving the possibility of a third unidentified gunman still on the run. French and Belgian authorities have issued a warrant for Salem Abdesalam. The third fugitive has not been identified. The latest on news from Russian officials declares that a passenger jet was brought down over Egypt by an explosive device. Two U.S. defense officials say Russia has attacked the city of Raqqa, the Islamic State group's self-declared capital in Syria, with crews, missiles, and bombs on Tuesday. On Tuesday, Russia's security service said a homemade explosive device brought down a passenger plane over Egypt last month that killed 224 people, calling it a terrorist act. FSB Director Alexander Bortnikov announced Tuesday that the Islamic State group has claimed responsibility for detonating a homemade explosive device on the aircraft. The FSB later appealed to Russia and international communities for cooperation in identifying the terrorist and offered a 50 million U.S. dollar reward. One day before the terrorist attack on Paris, there was a terrorist attack in Beirut, Lebanon. ISIS claimed responsibility for the attack that killed 43 and wounded over 200 people. Around 48 hours after the attack, internal security forces arrested 11 people, mostly Syrians. The arrest of the two Syrian and Lebanese suspect was later announced. The civil war in Syria is creating instability in the region. Lebanon had 4 million citizens pre-war and now have added 1 million Syrian refugees to their country. This has been the worst terrorist attack since the Lebanese Civil War. However, there is little to no coverage in mainstream media outlets. Lebanese people are left wondering why there has been such a shortage of coverage on the attacks in their homeland. They feel Western media is effectively saying that European lives matter more than Arab lives. Jorge Ponce joins us in the studio for a sports update. Jorge, there's a lot of talk about whether Los Angeles will have an NFL team to call their own. What have you found out about the recent speculation? Thank you, Jeremy. In 1994 was the last time Los Angeles had a football team to call their own. Ever since the Chargers moved to San Diego, the Oakland Raiders, St. Louis Rams, and the San Diego Chargers have entered the conversation over the move to LA. The Chargers are shaping up to be the most likely candidate to make the move. Let's find out what Charger fans had to say. Is the NFL coming back to Los Angeles? Or is it just a field of dreams? In Los Angeles, dreams are coming true. NFL is a reality. This is Los Angeles. Sunshine, beaches, Hollywood, where anything is possible. And home to a new NFL destination that will return pro football to Los Angeles with remarkable style. Sleek, smooth, aerodynamic, Designed to be an instant classic, this is the new Los Angeles Stadium in Carson. Architecturally significant and guaranteed to deliver an extraordinary football experience that gets fans off the couch and into the stadium. Centrally located to West LA and Orange County, 
and positioned to serve all of Southern California. The stadium in Carson offers easy and direct freeway access for everyone, along with dedicated VIP lanes. The atmosphere is electric, and every fan will feel special from the moment they arrive. With plenty of space dedicated to the sacred ritual of tailgating and an authentic farmer's market to bring local flavor to a time-honored tradition. Game day starts early with red zone action on giant HD screens as the Hollywood drive-in makes a triumphant return. Live music helps create the biggest pregame party around and establishes this new stadium as the best large outdoor venue in 20 years has had their own team. Speculation has it that the Chargers may be coming back home. Location at El Compadre with Charger fans, and this is what they had to say. So I'm here with uh, Robert Funes. So um, how do you feel having an NFL team, especially the Chargers? I think it'll be great. Um, I've been rooting for this team since I was a kid, like in the early 90s. Uh, about time LA gets a football team. We've been, we've been without one since 94. Uh, honestly, with the Chargers coming here, it'll be great. I can finally root for them locally instead of me traveling down two, two, two hours, two and a half hours. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, I feel great about the team being here. That's all that matters to me, though. Hello, I'm with Liz here. So I'm asking, um, how you feel with the Chargers coming to LA? They need to come immediately. There's a lot of Chargers fans. We're going to support them 100%. The stadium will be filled with pure Chargers from Los Angeles. Only all Charger fans. If you want to meet other Charger fans, come down to the El Compadre restaurant located in 1248 South Figueroa. Street Suite 101, Los Angeles, California, 90015, across from the convention center. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Jorge. Later on, Fernando Benini joins us for a report. Plus, the rocket that was seen over Southern California. Was it a rocket or was it something else? Stay tuned. Here, um, of the school shooting. 14 students that have been shot. Several people have been taken away by ambulance. You know, these units in the school, I got uh, bodies here. I'm really scared. What if I'm next? If I'm next, I won't be able to make my family proud. I won't get that chance to open up the community center for kids. I won't be able to graduate. I won't be able to start my career. My mommy and daddy will miss me. Make sure to keep the conversation going so that we don't forget about all the people who've been affected by mass shootings and violence in our country. We have been through this too many times. They had their entire lives ahead of them. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, kids of their own. What if you're next? Welcome back to Los Angeles Community Connection. I'm Jeremy Jesse. And I'm Darcel Hoover. Now for our next story. The Los Angeles City College District Board of Trustees honored CTE programs and industry partners at the inaugural CTE Spotlight Awards. CTE programs are career technical education programs such as the Cinema TV and Radiologic Technology that are geared towards teaching students career-related skills. The Spotlight Awards celebrates CTE advocacy and excellence. Senior staff from all nine colleges were in attendance. LACCD Chancellor Francisco Rodriguez spoke about the mission of the CTE We've been charged programs. by our nation's president to build the middle class. We've been charged by our nation's president to fulfill and bridge the middle skills gap that exists. And tonight, through a ceremony like this, to the students that we are honoring, to the programs that will be highlighted in CTE, we are affirming that promise to serve. Los Angeles City College awarded Panavision with the CTE Advocacy Award for their generous support of this cinema TV department. LACC professor Israel Fonseca from Radiological 
Technology received the CTE Excellence Award for working with industry partners to enhance the Rad Tech program. LACC Rad Tech student Nathaniel Carrion received the CTE Honors Award. Congratulations to all the honorees. Residents of California witnessed a bright object leaving a streak of light across the sky. The Pentagon issued a statement that the Navy Strategic Systems Program conducted a scheduled test of a missile from USS Kentucky, an Ohio-class submarine. But skeptics have other words regarding the situation. An astronomer in Griffith Observatory claims that the light was a comet passing, believed to be a single comet, a precursor to the tarred meteor shower that is expected this month. When a comet comes into atmosphere, it is normal for there to be a white light and then a blue and green streaks, claims the researcher. While on Twitter, the debate continues if the rocket was in fact a rocket or possibly a UFO. University of Missouri System President Tim Wolf resigned Monday. Students had called for his resignation due to the inaction of his dealing with racism on the overwhelmingly white campus. There have been racial slurs hurled at blacks and a swastika drawn using feces on a wall in a residence. Graduate student Jonathan Butler was on a hunger strike for five days without any action taken from the university. It wasn't until the black football players of the Missouri Tigers stepped in with threats to not be part of any football activity. The team would have forced to be faced a $1 million cancellation fee if they did not play against the Brigham Young University Cougars, which in turn forced Wolf to resign. The fight for fast food workers' wages to be raised to $15 an hour is still going on. Across the nation, earlier this week, employees gathered in front of the El Pollo Loco, located in Long Beach, California. They held picket signs demanding that their wages be raised to $15 per hour. There have been strikes across the country formed by many different fast food chain workers. In Boston, Massachusetts, a state legislative committee approved a bill that would raise the wage to $15 an hour. But so far, California has not reached agreements at the state legislative level. Many Los Angeles fast food workers are still organizing more protests in the future. Many people find their purpose in life by making a difference for others. Fernanda Binini joins us to share one of these stories. Fernanda? Thank you, Jeremy. I've met with Ariel Caputo to hear her inspired journey as a suicide intervention coach and learn more about her supporting group, Deep in Love. This is what we uncovered. Ariel Caputo is a suicide intervention coach who runs the supporting group, Deep in Love, which stands for Dream Endlessly, Actively Pursue dedicated to offering support and hope to teens and adults struggling with depression, self-harm, and suicide. Then to find that, like, aha, or that, what makes your heart beat a little bit faster, or what you look forward to doing and look forward to helping people with. I started posting motivational videos, like a 15-second power thought of the day. Within three months, I had 1,000 followers. Six months, I had 10,000 followers. Eight months later, I had 24,000 followers. And so I would post a, a new motivational video every single morning. When you start feeling down, depressed, sad, ask yourself, what positivity am I bringing in today? I would get pictures of noose marks, um, videos of girls cutting, anything, name it. I started receiving that. And I, although I hit a rock bottom, I've never contemplated suicide myself. And so I kept being like, you need to go call the hotline. You need to go visit someone or ask for help. And everyone would be like, we don't want to call the hotline. We want to talk to you. According to CDC, suicide is the third leading cause of death among young people between the ages 10 and 24, and the 10th leading cause of death for all ages in the United States. Jennifer Adams' successful story of overcoming depression and suicidal thoughts began with a letter that she wrote to a friend. One of the things that I said in the letter was that um, I wonder what the world would be like if I wasn't in it. People are like, how do you deal with all that intensity of suicide and depression, but what I see is the transformations. I actually came across uh, Ariel's uh, Instagram and her Facebook group and um, I came across Deep in Love. So once I found the website, I reached out to Ariel and I was like, I want to help in any way I can. The love you put out in the universe 
always comes back. And there isn't a scale of goodness. It's just good deeds. There's also like a support group that she does in Culver City uh, Tuesdays at 8 p.m. here in LA. And um, it's a really good source for people to reach out. We think of it as this huge thing that I have to do, and it's not. It's the love you put out regardless. So then that led to publishing my book, which is Love You, Me, We. It's 365 ways to spread love in the modern world. I know, you know, we don't want to be a burden to people, and, and we don't want to bother people, or, you know, you're, you're afraid of somebody's reaction for you telling them that, hey, I'm thinking about taking, you know, my own life. I understand that's a very vulnerable thing, and it is. So be careful who you tell that to, of course. But just know that most of the time, you know, there are methods of reaching out. We aren't given these dreams to just dream them. We were given them to actually make them happen. So like, this is what you were put here to do. So go do it. Like, give yourself the permission to go do what you want to do. For anyone struggling with thoughts of suicide, depression, and self-harm, or know someone who needs help, please reach out. Ariel's website is www.deepinlove.com. You can also find her on Instagram at Ariel Caputo. Back, at, back to you at the desk. When we come back, Fernando Benini joins us again with the latest in entertainment. Don't touch that remote. We'll be right back. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you've got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, babe. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. And now to Adrian Harris and his exciting report about our most precious resource, the MLK Library. I went to the MLK Library to find out how many students actually use the library. I interviewed several librarians, and here, take a look. Hi, come on in. Well, my name is Barbara Vasquez. I'm the department chair here in the library. Took a little detour, worked for IBM, and then came back to being a librarian. And the good news is, that um, all my knowledge from IBM was now put to use in libraries because, of course, now libraries are automated. And this is Professor Gardard, librarian. I am an associate professor of library and information science here at Los Angeles City College in the Martin Luther King Jr. Library. Saying that you don't need a librarian because you have the internet is just like saying I don't need a math teacher because I have a calculator. Information is very powerful. And it's extremely important that students know how to find information and to utilize the resources that this library offers to them. Every student, the textbook are so expensive. So it is very important for us to have at least one copy of textbook that we need donation or loan of textbook to the library. It is so ridiculous right now that one small textbook soft bound is like 120. And most of our students who had the book voucher will only get like about 100 or 150. So it will only have one book. And if they have three classes, it will be hard for them to have all the books. So we are trying our best to beg from the teachers and from the foundation, from former students to give us a copy of textbook. The MLK Library has many underused resources. Please see your librarian for further information. To find out more about the library services, visit www.lacitycollege.edu. Back to you at the desk. Thank you, Adrian. Saturday night in Melbourne, Australia, undefeated MMA fighter Ronda Rousey was defeated by Holly Holm with a head kick in round two. Ronda was favored to win, but no one took into the account the experience and pro fights Holm had behind her. Holm is considered one of the best women boxers of all time, 
Coming into this fight, Holm was also a champion kickboxer. Since being defeated, Ronda has endured a barrage of hateful tweets from fans and celebrities like Donald Trump and Lady Gaga, among others. Holly Holm and Floyd Mayweather have come to her defense, asking people to not be so hurtful. Tuesday, Charlie Sheen sat down with NBC Today show host Matt Lauer and announced that he is HIV positive. Sheen is on antivirals and healthy. He said he contracted HIV about four years ago. Sheen reported that he disclosed his illness with all of his sexual partners. Sheen was being blackmailed and paid out millions of dollars to keep his HIV status a secret. When asked if he was going to continue paying blackmailers, Sheen responded. Um, not after today, I'm not. So you think that by speaking this truth, you will get out from under that? That's 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 my goal, and my, my it's not. I mean, that, that that's not my only goal. We'll talk more about that later. But um, no, I think I I I I think I um I release myself from this prison today. Knowing he had the illness had sent him into deep depression and drug use. Sheen said he is giving up the drugs and looking ahead to his new projects coming up. Women have come forward filing lawsuits saying Sheel, Sheen did not disclose his HIV status. And now with us in the studio is Fernanda Benini to talk about entertainment. Thanks, Jeremy. The recently released edition of Bobby Dylan's Bootleg Series Volume 12 takes you inside the studio for the recording of three of his most iconic albums, Bring You All Back Home, Highway 61 Revisited, and Blown on Blown. This collection is a treasure trove of unreleased songs, outtakes, rehearsals, and alternate versions. The original albums created a profound change within the American recording industry of the mid-1960s. Dylan's bold aesthetic choices have profoundly impacted generations of musicians, and his unorthodox approach to creating songs have provided essential building blocks for contemporary singers and songwriters. His transition from folk to rock music and his sharp integration of rock and roll, blues, and countryfied sounds resulted in a new classic rock sound and revealed a lyrical brilliance that the world had never heard before. Princess Leia, one of the best sci-fi movie characters of all time, has a new title in Star Wars The Force Awakens. Director and co-writer of the upcoming movie J.J. Abrams said that Leia is referred to as a general. But there, there's a moment in the movie where a character so, sort of sleeps and calls her princess. We don't know who it, it is that calls her princess or what the contact is, but if you had to place a wa wager, we could bet it's Han Solo. J.J. Abrams says that Leia's story has very high stakes and that hers is one of the heavier arcs. While the new title is very fitting, it's going to take some getting used to hearing the characters referring to her as General. We find out what General Leia has been up to for the last 30 years when Star Wars The Force Awakens finally opens on December 18. So what do you think is going to happen with her and Han Solo? Did they ever get married, have children? Well, there is a, a clip uh, of Leia embracing, um, Leia and Han Solo embracing on the movie trailer, but it doesn't look like a happy occasion, unfortunately. Mm. You know, it doesn't seem like the two are going to be together, but we hope to see some happy surprises, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Fernanda. When we come back, Sheila Thorne gives us her opinion on being your authentic self. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here at LACC-TV, we strive to cover the uncovered and bring you our second installment of Activist State. 
transgender activists around the world are preparing for Transgender Day of Remembrance on November 20th. In cities around the world, trans people light candles and stand in solidarity, mourning in the deaths of other trans people killed in the last year here in the United States. The death rate has reached 22 deaths this year. Violence transgender people has turned into an epidemic. The Transgender Murder Monitoring Project reports 1,731 transgender people have been murdered since 2008. Caitlyn Jenner is talking, taking to the cities of America to helping shed lights on the trans issues, including violence in the trans community, high suicide rates, bullying and harassment of K-12 kids, and high unemployment rates. Ms. Jenner, along with fellow castmates, including Candace Kane and Shandy Moore, recently spoke to students in a packed auditorium at Graceland University regarding these issues. To find out more about Transgender Day of Remembrance and where in your local area you can take a stand with the trans community, you can go to www.tdoor.info. In our viral video of the week, pro skiing veteran Ian McIntosh narrowly escapes with his life after what TGR co-founder Todd Jones says was the most terrifying crash I've ever seen. While filming for Paradise Waits, up in the Neocola range of Alaska, McIntosh dropped into a line he thought he had studied thoroughly enough only to fall into an unseen five foot deep trench on one of his first turns. After the ordeal, Mac told the film crew, from there, my slop took over and there was no way to stop. I pulled my airbag to help prevent against any possible trauma injuries as I tumbled to the bottom. While attempting to regain his footing, Macintosh lost a ski and cartwheeled over 1,600 feet in under a minute. I'm okay, I'm okay. We are near the end of our news broadcast, but before we sign off, we are going to toss it over to Sheila Thorne for her opinion piece of contradictions. If we would just be honest and say what we mean and mean what we say, nothing more, nothing less, then we wouldn't have so many problems with people being two-faced. We should be honest with our words and actions. Don't say one thing and do another. You are judged by your, your actions and not your intentions. You very well may have a golden heart, but so does a boiled egg. In life, there are many contradicting statements, such as, the best things are free. But on the other hand, you'll hear, you get what you pay for. And how about this one? Look before you leap, but he who hesitates is lost. Some people are just human contradictions. They have no confidence, yet they are filled with egos. They want only the best, but don't want to work for it. Some may even deem to love you and say they have your back, but their hearts have waxed cold, and they may have your back only to stab you in it. But don't be a walking contradiction with words that don't mean anything or actions that contradicts, nor waste your time with empty promises, because that is deceitful, and it speaks volume about your character. Remember this, we are absolutely nothing without love. Therefore, invest in your character and boost your credibility by delivering real value to your words. That's called integrity. I'm Sheila Thorne, and that's my opinion. Darcel and Jeremy, back to you at the desk. Thank you, Sheila. And thanks for watching the episode of Los Angeles Community Connection from the HFPA Center for Cinema and Television. I'm Darcel Hoover. And I'm Jeremy Jesse. You can follow us on Facebook at LACC TV. Thanks for watching and have a great night.